Hey church, welcome back to another episode of The Breakdown. Every Wednesday at 7 o'clock here on YouTube or Facebook. We also want to invite you to join us every Sunday at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. here at our campus for our outdoor services. Uh, I want to invite you to just come to the community. We were here, we're outdoors. It's pretty warm outside right now. Uh, but today, I'm so excited to have this group of people here. This group of people are some of the funnest and coolest people I know. Not the most coolest, but some of the coolest. <laughs> Speaking of close today. enough. Close enough. And, uh, and I just want to introduce you. Let's start here. Um, just introduce your name a little bit and what you do, and just explain to everyone who wouldn't know who the captain is uh, here at the church. The captain? <laughs> the captain. Wow. Okay. Well, my name is Derek. Uh, I'm one of the pastors here, and I do a whole lot of stuff. Give us three, because you do more. You do uh, more than that. Take a nap. I, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, let's see. I guess I, I can add adding T and O right yeah, that's to the list now. Now yeah. that I did it. Yeah. Uh, no, it's I help a lot in the background. So a lot of administration systems and doing a lot of that marketing, some graphics, websites. But I'm just gonna put you on the spot since we were talking about it earlier. <laughs> Yes, you okay. do. You do that right now. But you've been the children's pastor before. I you've have. You've been our sound tech. Uh, yes. You've been our graphic designer. I have. You've been. Wow. Everything. Everything. Janitor. I think everything. you've done every every <laughs> other. Ministry. I think I have. Yeah, everything. You've done. I haven't done worship point. team. Oh, I haven't been on the worship team. No. No. I mean, as a sound guy. Thank you, God for that. You though. basically are. Thank God, man. <laughs> right. Thank God. You don't want to hear me sing. The, okay. I thought. I thought because of. <laughs> because of other people. Awesome. No, I'm so glad uh, to have you here, Pastor Derek. Thanks for having me. It's a great pleasure to have Pastor Derek. And also, as a counter part of Pastor Derek, we have Mr. Yes. I, I don't want to introduce you to you. Introduce yourself and, okay. and, and explain <laughs> explain to everybody who you are. So my name is David, and um, I'm actually Pastor Derek's son. Wow. Surprisingly. What? I know. Um, and what I do is I'm the technical director here. <laughs> so I deal with more of like, like he was also like him, the backstage side of the production aspect. So lighting, sound, I pretty much learned it from him. So I kind of just carried the mantle. <laughs> Some people might be offended by that. No, but you did learn a lot from your dad. And it, it's really cool. I think it's really cool that you were, you know, at one point a tech guy here. And now you're taking that as a staff member here at the church. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. Uh, just to bring the conversation of there's no success without successor, you know, like literally as a as an offspring, as a child. Yeah, yeah I would say it is pretty cool to, to know that my son has taken over. Yeah. And kind of done all of that. Um, I know there's a lot of, I get to have a lot of fun with them. Yeah. <laughs> kind of <laughs> poke at the things that he Do you does still tell because him? I know. Do you still tell him the things that he does wrong? I try to, yeah. but you know, technology advances so quick that it's oh, honestly, I don't really know what's going on anymore. That's true. That's true. He's ahead of the game. For so that. you know, you combine that with old age, and it's just kind of like sometimes I forget his name. <laughs> I don't even know who you are. That's awesome. And who do we have here? My name is Stephanie. Awesome. Um, I actually grew up here at Heart Rev, and um, were you part of the children's ministry as well, or a little older than that? I was. I was wow. part of Kingdom Kids <laughs> in the high school. Yeah. Um, but I, right now, am one of Pastor Crystal's PPAs, and I also am part of the worship team. So. Awesome. How long, how long have you been in the worship team? Um, probably, like, maybe four years now. Yeah. Awesome. And shout out to, since we have a family here, shout out to your dad. My dad. Awesome. He's a great guy. Yeah. Shout, shout out, to, out to you, dad. Love Mike. <laughs> Tell us, guy. tell us one thing, and I, I mean, I'm, I'm just bringing in this this family conversations because of the, yeah. the topic today. Uh, it's called homesick. Just tell us one thing that you love about your dad. One thing I love about my dad. Um, just one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I think something I love about my dad is that he always like he always has something to say. Like he always has something to say, but like when I like really truly like think about it, like I'm really thankful for it because half the time it's like, now I know like where my concepts are coming from and like where I'm, where my mindset is and how I'm thinking. So, because he always has something to say about everything that I do. Nice. I'm also grateful about it because then, then I know like someone cares and someone's like, you know, really like watching, you know, what I'm doing, how I right. am and everything, so. And then tell us one thing that you strongly dislike about your dad. Mm, 
We're exactly alike. Wow. We bump heads like crazy. We're That's exactly a good alike. one, right? Because you put it on yourself too. That's cool. Yeah. I like that. So let's get right in. Uh, Pastor TJ had a great <laughs> message. It's called Homesick. And I think it's great uh, for because of the collection of, of conversations that we've had, you know, based on uh, Blueprint and just building up a home. So I'm very excited, you know, that we have family members here and that your dad and your mom, they serve here. You know, so it's, it's just a really great, really great group of people to talk about being homesick. So I just want to start, you know, with the opening verse on Galatians 4.22. Uh, it's talking about Abraham. You know, uh, he says he had two sons, one from his slave wife and one from his freeborn wife. The son of the slave wife was born in a human attempt to bring about the fulfillment of God's promise, but the son of the freeborn was born as God's own fulfillment. You know, so I just want to break that down today and, and just talk about how sometimes we try to fulfill God's promises in our lives, uh, and it doesn't really work out. You know, I believe that I'm not an expert in, like, global, you know, in society and stuff, but I believe that a lot of the issues happening in the Middle East is just because of these two this two uh, tribes, you know, the, the legitimate born son and then the legitimate. And I think all the way till today, we can see how just one man's trying to fulfill them, their own promise just can ruin the entire spectrum of our world and politics. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's really intense. So I just wanted to ask you guys, um, has there ever been a, in a time that you felt homesick? Uh, and let's just start with the basic, you know, like in reality, like homesick. Is there any time that you've been apart from your family, your homes? that you felt like, dude, I need, to, I need to get back. Pastor Derek, we'll start with you. Um, I, I would say, well, I was born in New Jersey. So we moved wow. to For California real? when I was nine. I did yeah. not know that. And so I was, I was born in a pretty small town in, in New Jersey. Yeah. And when I moved here, it was culture shock, like completely different from the people in, in New Jersey. And, and I know that for, I think the first few years that I was here, it was really tough being in California. Oh. For me, um, how come? I, well, my best friend, like in New Jersey, my best friend was two houses away. Uh, we lived in a small, smaller neighborhood, so you know I could, I could go out and play with my friends until nine o'clock at night. You know, right. a little seven-year-old out until ten o'clock at night with his friends. Yeah. You know, riding our bikes around the neighborhood. Um, and then I came here, and it's a big city. Uh, the first place that we moved here was into a condo, and there were no kids around. There was no like park. There was it was next to um, University of San Diego, so it was all like college kids. Yeah. And then uh, older people, so there was like nobody my age around, and it was just boring. Yeah. Like I, I had a balcony to play in, so I went from having like a whole neighborhood to play with, play in, to a, to a balcony, and it, it was it was tough. Right. And it's like every day I just wished I could go back to New Jersey. Um, and still, um, no, not anymore. Uh, no, well, no, Sometimes. not really. No, Sometimes. he always says he always yeah. says he wants to go. Yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah. How old I, were you, How old you when you came in? Nine. Nine. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. How about you, Steph? Is there a time that you felt homesick? Oh yeah. I um. So right after high school, I moved to Arizona. Right. And I remember, like, just getting prayed out. I did not want to go. Like, I wanted to go, like, for the college and, like, the program and everything. But I was like, all my friends are here. Like, you know, my family's here. And I was going to be over there with my grandpa. And I'm like, that's not fun. And so I was homesick from, like, the day I left to, like, probably, I'm not joking. Like, it took me a year to kind of, like, adjust there. When you... Oh, when you were there? Yeah, when I was How in Arizona. I was there for two years. Wow. Um, I did undergrad there. And, yeah, I, I, I just remember, like, I'm just going to be straight up, like, I was sad. Yeah. I missed my parents. You know, my dad would call me, like, almost every day. My mom. Um, I just missed being home. And also, I'm an only child, so it was kind of like, you know, there was no, like, siblings to miss. It was just, like, only my parents that I really, really wanted to be with. And so um, when I moved, when, and when I was over there too, like, oh my gosh, like I was just like so grateful, like moving back because I was like, I can actually talk to my mom about my problems face to face and not have to call her, right. you know? But yeah, I, yeah, definitely homesick for like that whole year. I was so sad, but God, luckily I got like plugged in at, um, well, at that time we had the Tucson church. So I got plugged in there and everything, but it still wasn't the same. Cause you know, like the environment's different over there. Everyone was right. like way older than I was. People, so yeah. Sure. yeah. Nice. How about David? 
Um, for me, it was during high school. Um, I was kind of going through a rough patch in my life at the time. Yeah. And I felt like I wasn't good enough to be home with my family because they've always been loving and they've always been Pastor Derek and yeah. Pastor Letty, even before their or ordination. Right? right. Yeah. Even before that, they've always been everybody's kind of like lead. Go to lead. Yeah. yeah. So I always felt like I was never good enough. So I would always stay at my friend's house. Like I used to be there almost probably like six days out of the week right i was just home for probably like one day yeah and everything like that so i remember being homesick during that thinking i really wish that i could be home wow. and like with my family but it was just the same thought of not being good yeah. enough to come back to them so, and how what made you come back um my mom nice. my mom actually like she was very my mom has my mom and i've always been really really close so she knows when something's not right yeah. so she was just like okay you can't just keep fighting it anymore you got to come home we gave you your space to figure it out but if you're just staying in it like you gotta you gotta move now so she really forced me and although i didn't enjoy it at the time right it ended up paying off really well wow that's crazy and it, and it's really it's really a good metaphor you know kind of to to the message that pastor tj was saying because sometimes we have that regard you know sometimes we yeah. we're the ones who go away and we detach Uh, but like you said, you detached even because they were so good that you didn't feel enough, you know? Yeah. And that's just the perfect example. Uh, to just move on into this next question is like, when was the time that you felt homesick from God, you know? Like most of us, uh, I mean, I know all of you for a couple of years now and us three work together. Steph, you're here in ministry a lot, you know? So we, we're very deep, um, rooted in the church, but even being in the church, I know because I've experienced it myself, um, There's times that you just detach from God, you know? So when, when, when has been a time that you felt you've been trying to distance yourself from God, but you, you have that homesick feeling about church? You know, have you ever felt that? Oh, yeah. I, Every, I think, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, seasons come, like, they come and go, but they keep coming back. Right. Um, I, I know I, I've been on staff at the church for, I think, 19 years, and it's, I almost think it's worse being on staff Yeah. Because you're homesick at a place that you keep coming back to. Right. So it feels like it's a different place, but you're here every day. Yeah. And so the feeling of it changes. And, you know, sometimes it's it's something that I'm doing yeah. that makes me feel disconnected. Sometimes it's just other people, seasons in their life, they leave or they've had to go somewhere else. Right. And um, I know that I think it just keeps, it comes and goes. Like it's not, yeah. the, the hardest part I think is remembering when it was really good yeah or remembering a really good time not even and forgetting that there's still a future right that's good so you start thinking about all the things that you're missing out on but you you don't think about who who's coming you think about the people who left but you don't think about who's coming right you think about the friends you've lost but you don't think about the friends you can make wow that's and good. so i think it's it's you you just kind of go it's like a roller coaster you just keep going up and down right so How about you guys? Have you guys ever felt homesick from God? Like, in, yeah. in ministry, in life? I mean, I've I made a decision during my rough patch right. to actually leave church for a while. Yeah. So I was away from church, like, because I've always been a ministry kid. So it was, it was a very different, big move for me. And I remember thinking, too, like, like I even remember telling him, too. I was like, I miss going to the church. Yeah. Like, I just want to go. And it wasn't because of, like, anything just like oh i just want to go to say i can go but it was more like i genuinely was telling them i was like i want to go i want to be with like the people there and the atmosphere there because it's like it's like family right you know the same thing like with him when i was away um it's almost like i would miss the embrace of coming to church and yep. feeling you know god's arms being wrapped around me to be like you know like you're always welcome here regardless of whether or not you think you're good enough like You're always welcome here. That's awesome. Stephanie, how about you? Yeah, I think actually it's funny. Um, this year I definitely was in a season where I didn't even realize like how homesick I was. Right. Yeah, I think it's like how he was saying, like it's so easy to like come to church and serve. And like I said, I grew up here and it was something I was doing every Sunday. Like this is just what I know, reading the Bible because I have to. That's how I have, you know, a relationship with God. And I think what I've learned is something like um, – I've shared with my friends is like God truly like he truly broke me this year and it was 
for me to realize like how much I needed him and how much I needed to trust him. And that's something like, you know, we always talk about and literally what we learn every Sunday is to trust God. But you have to be like, you have to desire that relationship so badly and get out of like, you know, that gut you know, just feeling. Right. And I think this year I truly realized like, Hey, you know, like I thought I was in routine. This is something I was continuously doing every Sunday. Like I'm a Christian. I love Jesus, but I think trusting God is literally everything. And that shows how much like you love him and how yep. down you are for him. And it, it's a reminder too, of how like down God is for you and how much like he loves us. So I think this year, like, you know, I, I super realized like routine, if I could say anything like routine, um, can get you homesick too without right. even realizing it. Cause you're not doing anything like with purpose. You're kind of just doing it. Cause like, this is what I've known my whole life. And that's true. Yeah. yeah. And that's huge because we have so many volunteers here. So many people come to the church and, and like you said, we can become over familiar we're doing it, and like Pastor Derek said earlier, sometimes you get homesick because we're here so much, you know, and but we're not even considering it like a home either. Uh, but just for that, you know, like in order to be homesick, you have to call this place a home. And I think I just want to ask you guys that question, you know, since we've both been here, both of y'all have been here, well, you've been here since you were born, mm -hmm. basically, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For 19 years? Yeah. And how old are you? 19. I'm about to be 20 in two months. In two months? Party. We yeah. got some cake in the back. Yeah. <laughs> it's like one pizza because it's not your month yet. <laughs> but I, I just wanted to ask you guys, uh, when was that time that you decided to make this your home? You know, and for you guys, especially because since you were raised here, sometimes it's just easy to just be like, oh, well, that's the place I go. Like you were saying, it just becomes a routine. But like there, there comes a decision. You know, I remember when I was young, I grew up at the church. But I remember it was a specific time, you know, in middle school when you decide, okay, I'm actually a Christian, you know? But for you guys, when, when did you feel that this is actually a place that you could eventually get homesick from? You know, what, what, how, how did that look in your life? Um, for me, it was uh, coming out of high school. I mean, most of my life. <laughs> that was when your life started. That was like just the peak. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, uh, I remember I actually used to go to another church and it was actually like I learned a lot there and there was a big conversation between me and him just a straight honesty saying like I don't I don't know where I'm supposed to be because right. although like I was there I felt like my calling was to be here again yeah. you know like and I was telling him I was like I think it's time for me to go back and this was also during like my homesick and that was the realization that I think I was like, okay, that, that is home, you right. know, like when everything else is seems not right, but the right thing to do is to go home. Right. And that's, that was for me in my kind of moment where I was like, okay, this is home, you know? Awesome. And did you feel, Pastor Derek, since he was talking about that, did you ever feel, or how was that relationship between you guys that... My, my question, I want to ask, uh, did you ever force him to be here? That's what I want to ask, but I'm just going to ask you straight up. Did you ever force him? Because he's talking about, like, okay, I need to come back and stuff, but have you ever felt, okay, you need to be here where I'm at, or you need to find your own church, or how, how's the relationship, or how do you guys grow together as a family when now that he's an adult, he can pick, you know, to, to make another home? Well, I think as a kid, right. obviously, he was, you're wherever I'm at. Right. Um, but I think as he grew older and really in high school, when he started to be able to make his own decisions and make his own friends. Um, that's when I started at least having the conversation with them and saying, okay, you have to decide. The thing is, is that I, I really believe that home is built on relationship. It's right. not built on the location. It's not built on what you have. It's the people that you have around you. Yeah. And so you get homesick from people. You don't get homesick from, from, a place. room, right? Wow, that's a location. True. That's so good. Yeah. It's not hashtag. It's the people that you, you get miss. home from. You get homesick from people, right? Yeah, that's good. So, so for me and and with David, the conversation that I would have with him is: you have to decide where you want to be. Like, who do you want to be with? Who do you want to be around? Right. And, and I understand that you're going to grow up, and eventually you're not going to choose your your mom and I. Like, I I understand that you're gonna you have to be an adult. Right. But until then. Um, and even after that, you can't choose to not have us in your life. So right. you got to figure out how to have us in your life because we're never going to stop being your parents. Awesome, we're yeah. never going to stop being your family. 
Now, where you put that for yourself, that's yeah. up to you. Yeah. But you'll have to live with the consequences of whatever you decide. Yeah. So if you don't want to have a relationship with us, then you got to figure out how to do this life on your own yeah. without your parents' advice, without your parents' love or anything like that. Money. Money. <laughs> right. Yeah. Definitely money. Yeah. Oh. So, but I think that was the conversation that, that we have. And I think I still try to give them that space to yeah. say, um, when I was talking about relationships, it's like, I, I can't tell you who to date. I can't tell you who to fall in love with. Right. I can't tell you who you're going to marry. Yeah. You have to decide that on your own. Just like nobody could tell me who I was going to marry. Right. But when I found her, when I found my wife, I was like, okay, this is it. And nobody can tell you that And nobody can tell not. me that she's not. Right. And to this day, nobody can tell me that she's not. Yeah. And so... I mean, she'll be the only person that can tell me that. <laughs> she's she's got a say in this too. Not okay? today. So yeah, yeah. I'll give her, I'll give her that. But, yeah. but nobody else can tell us, hey, yeah. you know what? You're not going to be in love anymore. That's, that's us. Right. We've decided that. And so I have to give people that space. I had to give him that space. And it's in little bits. It's not like one yeah. day, hey, <laughs> you know, here's the keys to the car. Go, right, go right. crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's like. No, you're gonna you're it gonna drive like around that, for a while. It was the one day, <laughs> the one day I got the keys. That's awesome. And how about you, Steph? Like, also growing up here at church, was there a time uh, when you became an adult that you were like either tempted or you did like, okay, this is not gonna be my home anymore. I know my parents go to this church, but I'm gonna look. Or, or how did you feel? How did you make this your home? Yeah, um, I think in college. Um, when I was in Arizona, I, like I said, I didn't have my parents there. So it was so easy to do, like, whatever I wanted. Like, I didn't have to be home by, like, 10 o'clock anymore. Like, you know, I'm right. doing whatever I wanted. And even then, like, it wasn't even about, like, doing what everyone else was doing was, like, you know, partying, drinking and all that stuff. I think it was, like, just those, like, little steps of being able to be out later or, like, be hanging out with, like, like, with my dad, it was always, like, I, I can only hang out with girls. Right. And then when I'm in college, it's like, oh, boys and girls, you know, like, you're cool and everything. Yeah. And I think, like, those small things for me, like, were, like, my outing. And I think after a while when I, like, was kind of checking myself where, like, maybe God was checking me, I was like, oh, my God, like, my dad would not be okay with this. Like, is God okay with this? Like, right. this is not what I've learned my whole life. And finally coming back home because I would obviously visit in between like vacation and stuff um I was not allowed to do that here and so that's when I realized like even being home I was like okay like I'm not allowed to do that at home and right. home is where I'm comfortable home is like like I said I was home sick so homesick so it's like home is where I want to be so I have right. to follow the rules like yeah. those are the things that led me to like you know realize like hey yeah like it went along with like my parents' guidelines and like also what God says. Yeah. And um, obviously like literally the church has always been home for me, but I think like, I guess like a check into like, you know, enjoying that life and then like coming back home and literally realizing what's right and what's wrong. Right. And that's awesome that you say, you know, that you, you, you realize that even though there was rules at home, mm -hmm. that's where you feel at home, you know? Yeah. So that way when you, wherever you go, you take those rules and then you make home wherever you are, you know, yeah. because because you have that that um, that heart and the morals that you've already been instilled. So just moving on for this message, you know, uh, Pastor TJ gave us a couple points. Uh, Pastor TJ Anglin, great message. The bishop. It was good. It was a great message. You were doing, you were doing sound the whole time. I was. You heard the whole message. <laughs> <laughs> so so he was talking. We're all there. We're all there. All services. Yeah. Uh, he's talking about home is a place of, and he gave us a couple of points. The first one is acceptance. Uh, he talked about Ephesians 1, 6. So I just wanted to open up this conversation a little bit. And how do we, because we're all in ministry, you're a pastor, you're a leader of ministry. Um, how do you uh, open up your heart and, and make this a home of acceptance for someone who just might be different? You know, have you ever had anyone come in? to your ministry or as a friend or in the church that just thinks or looks different than you, you know, and how did you just show that acceptance, you know, or, or even if it comes naturally or if it doesn't come naturally? I think for me, it was like, again, I said my, I was really, I was going through the rough patch and everything right. and I didn't feel accepted at home. But when I came to the realization that it was home and I was going to be accepted regardless, like no matter what I had done, no matter what I was going through, no matter yeah. what I thought, it would always, I would always be accepted. It was that it was regardless of whatever they have, whatever burdens they carry, who am I to really say, 
like you're not good enough to be with me right. like i mean i'm not even that great as it is you know yeah. so it's like why what where where do i get the right to say all of that you know right. so for me it's like come as you are you know not as what you're not as what i want you to be Great. So because you felt accepted at home, you were able to show it to other people. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And that shows a lot because sometimes, you know, if you don't feel accepted at church, you don't get to accept other people because you're still struggling through that, you know, and if you don't feel accepted at home, you don't get to accept other people. That's awesome, David. That's great. And what about you, Pastor Derek? Uh, as a pastor, I'm sure you've dealt with a lot of people who are different than you and in many ways. And, and how have you showed or do you have any example of some, sometimes that you had to go against your own nature to be accepting? I think I'm constantly going against my own nature to be right. accepting. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's kind of like a conscious decision that I have to keep making. Uh, one of the things that I always think about is the fact that God created each one of us uniquely. Yeah. And so what I think may not necessarily be what you think or what you think or what he thinks or anybody else thinks. But yet you were still created by God. So a different perspective may be the perspective of God that I just don't understand. Yeah that I just don't get. And so it's like, I'm constantly telling myself that there's more to it than just what I know. Right. Um, and I think it takes a lot of, uh, takes a lot of humility because I gotta be able to say I'm wrong right. or I may not see it all. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I just have to constantly tell myself there's a lot more to it than what I see. Yeah. Um, I, my wife and I watch a lot of like those like mystery, like detective shows CSI. and stuff like that. Yeah, CSI and that kind of stuff. Not, not a sponsor, yeah. So, <laughs> so we watch a lot of those shows and I'm, I'm always fascinated by them yeah. because it's like they show you the beginning and this is what happened. Right. And it's like the whole entire show, you're like, okay, this guy did it. No, this guy did it. No, yeah. this guy did it. And so it's like, sure every time. they're constantly <laughs> yeah. like giving you new information yeah. until eventually, you know, by the end of the show, you know who did it. <laughs> but it's, it's like, that's life. Right. Yeah. You're constantly coming into people and you don't know how they got there, it's but true. the more you talk to them, the more you spend time with them, you start to realize this is how they got there. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, okay, well, now that I know how you got there, yeah. I, I can understand why you're doing what you're doing, right. or, or at least yeah. I can accept it and be like, That's all right, I'm, I'm cool with it. I may not agree with it, yeah. but I'm cool with it. Right. I can understand it. So. I was talking to Emmanuel Alanis earlier today, and we were talking about that, you know, like getting to know different ministries and really getting to know what they do is how we can actually give them more grace, you know, and accept what they do without having so many like frustrations. Because, you know, if I don't know what David does in the technical, then anyone can be like very um, demanding, you know, do this, this and that. If you don't know what he has to work through, right? And sometimes it comes across, you know, uh, you don't get to accept what his position is. So I love what you said, you know, acceptance is because you first feel accepted and what you said is because you have to be humble to accept it. So moving on for Stephanie, uh, also another point was home is a place of joy. You know, uh, you're a very joyful person. You're in a worship team. But I'm sure that there's, you know, work, family, relationships, friends. Sometimes it's, you're not all there. How do you bring that joy or how do, how do you seek God to give you that joy uh, to just build the church, you know, with, with joy? So you don't come to church and just bring everyone down. Yeah, prayer. <laughs> prayer, awesome. A thousand percent prayer. Like, God knows my emotions are, like, up and down. They're different every day. I have my days where, like, I'm so upset, and I have no idea why. But I literally, like, I just pray, like, every morning. I'm like, God, like, let your presence surround me. Let your oh. presence be in my heart, God. Let everything that flows out of my mouth come from you. Everything that I hear come from you. Because I want to be, I don't want to just like, you know, like react. Right. That's something I struggle with, like react. Yeah. And it has a lot, I feel like that has a lot to do with acceptance because if I'm not like hearing, you know, through the ears of God and mm -hmm. I'm not, and I'm not, you know, seeing people through God's eyes and right. how am I going to accept them yeah. and how am I going to love on them? And like Pastor Derek says, like, sometimes you have to like get to know these people before yeah. like you come off of judgment or like, you know, think a certain way about, you know, who they are and everything. And, um, something, yeah, definitely. I, I always pray. I always pray. Like, yeah. I'm like, Lord, 
especially if it's like someone who's like, I know we've all had that one, like one person in our yeah, lives. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, you God, know like, get you mad. I'm going to see them today. <laughs> you know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> but no, honestly, like it's all God. It's all prayer. Do you ever see them from stage? You're singing yeah. and you see that person. No, you no. know what? God is a restorer of hearts. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And let me tell you. It's a true question. Yeah. No, I'm telling you, like. God is like I don't even like think that way anymore. Like yeah, that's awesome. been in a way in my life, but no, yeah. not even close. That's awesome. Yeah. And uh, for the next point, I just want to ask David because I know a little bit about David's lifestyle, a little bit, <laughs> but I know that you just don't sleep. Yeah. Is that a thing? <laughs> that's really a thing. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your sleep pattern before we go into the point. Well, I usually come to work, right. and then I go out with my friends right. until. I mean, he's been yelling at me, but probably like 11.30, right. 11. And then I get in my room, I eat, so I watch TV for about an hour, and then I play video games for another two. Wow. And then, what are you playing right now? Uh, There's going to be another, another show right here. I've been playing a few games. Okay, okay. You know, a little bit of Call of Duty, some Apex, just yeah. playing it with some friends. Like, I mean, they're young, so it's right. like... You're young, yeah. Yeah. You're allowed. <laughs> and then you sl- and you sleep at one time and at some point and I usually fall asleep around like three thirty. Wow. And There's then- a lot of people at home who are just cringing right now. Three thirty is not <laughs> acceptable anymore. <laughs> so um, I'm doing everything I can not to cringe up here. <laughs> like, you're like mm, I see him. I hear I hear him playing. Right. Yeah, yeah. So uh, at this point, he said, "Home is a place of rest." You know, and there's a difference between like physical rest and godly rest. Mm-hmm. So what have you experienced that um, here in ministry in church and in, and, and at home? Like, obviously, you don't care about physical rest, but, but how do you, like, doing, mi- doing ministry, home, and school, and friends, is there any time for spiritual rest, and how do you find that? Yeah, um, I actually find my spiritual rest in my work. Right. A lot of people always look at me crazy. They're like, how could you stay here for hours yeah. just working on random stuff? And it's because I find my rest in that. Like, hey, when wow. I'm building a stage or yeah. doing sound, it gives me the realization that, I, it always reminds me, and it's always a huge point in my life, that I am part of God's plan. I'm yeah. just a piece in the puzzle, you know? And it's like I can do all these cool lights, build yeah. all these amazing stuff, but it's like like it's really just nothing, right. you know? Like I'm just part of the puzzle. So it's more like it's always like it's very hard, especially working in a church too. It becomes yeah. like it's almost like you don't serve God, you work for God. Right. You know, so it's like you get this kind of like you have to draw a fine line and everything like that. And I remember feeling like that for a little at other places um, that I've worked for. Yeah. But like here, it's been like they'll ask me all the time. They're like, why are you coming home at like 11? Right. And I'm like, I was building a stage. You're like working. I was like, you yeah. know, <laughs> like I was just I was it. It's like opening to me. Like right. I just really enjoy doing it and being like here and sitting and just. Uh, David here, for everyone who doesn't know at home, he's the one who creates all these magnificent setups with lights and cables that, like you said, at one point we knew, but technology surpassed, surpassed us. <laughs> and this guy is a genius, right? And it was it was last week, and we're expecting the setup. You know, obviously, we're checking in on him, and I don't see nothing, and I don't see nothing. I'm just giving him time because we know David. And I'm like, okay, dude, sure. Uh, at one one point it'll be there, and then randomly we get a text in the in the staff group chat, right? And he's like closing the building, and then he sends me a picture, and then this amazing setup, right? And he just did it. We're able to come in today. I was like, are we gonna have the setup for Monday? And it's there, and it's beautiful. It's fully functioning, and it's great because, like you said, you find your rest working in this, and maybe you were in your creative zone, thinking about it in the week, and we feel like, what, what is he doing, you know? <laughs> but then here comes one night, and then you create this setup at night when everyone else is sleeping, and it's amazing, you know? And I just want to um, say that it's this great work, and it's great to hear that this is you do this legitimately for God, and that you find rest in it. Uh, so just to close, Pastor Derek, uh, the last point was the uh, home is a place of welcome. So I just want you to invite people at home, or how would you... Um, tell people at home that this is a place where they can feel welcome. I would say that God, God welcomes everyone because you were originally his creation. And so wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, whatever, whatever you feel like is keeping you away from him is, is something that he already knew about. Right. Um, you know, being a father, I can look at my kids and think, that was a dumb decision. Like right. you did something stupid. Yeah. 
but I don't love them any less. Yeah. In fact, I probably love them even more. Wow. Um, so I, I would say that if you feel like you're far, if you're far from God, if you feel like you're, you're distant from him, like you've never known him, the best thing to do is come to church wow. because you'll realize that church is a, it, it's a mix of all these different people. You know, I mean, even, even us here, yeah. we're just completely different people. And I mean, he's my son, so you can say there's some kind of You're connection, like, yeah. but, but the reality is we all have different experiences. Yeah. We all have, we're all at different places in our life. We're at different stages in our life. We, we think about different things when throughout the day, you know, when we're, when we wake up, uh, I have probably have completely different thoughts than what he thinks of when yeah. he wakes up. Um, so, but God accepts all of that right. and he knows all of that. And he loves you where you're, wherever you're at. So when, when we say that the house is, is, God's house is a place of welcome, it really is because I, don't, I can't think of any other place where there would be so many different people right. all in the same spot and in the same, uh, like with the same heart, right. yeah. you know, to, to, to get to know God. Right. And, and for some of them, that's their first time, you know, introduction. Some of them are 20 plus years yeah, yeah. getting to know them. So that's awesome. Be. Yeah. And to everyone at home, we just want to invite you back on Sunday at 9 a.m. at 11. This is a house of welcome. I want to welcome you here, your family, your friends. Uh, we're here and there's great words. And if you haven't checked out this message, Homesick by Pastor TJ Anglin, it's on YouTube and Facebook. Check it out so you can get the entire dynamic and the entire word, all the verses. We're just breaking down more conversations, but you can check out the message on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, we love you guys. Thank you for being here with us today and we'll see you guys next week.